Hey folks, this is Perry again. It's been a while, but I've been working on a lot of projects and I can't share all of those right now, but I can share some of them. Uh, it's currently October 31st. Uh, this is going to be shot sometime before the whole series is released. Uh, but anyway, I bought another truck. And you might say, well, why did you buy another truck and where is the rest of it? And the answer to the first question is, my other truck's broken again. Almost exactly three years to the day uh, that I got in an accident with somebody that pulled out in front of me. The radiator that was replaced from that accident uh, failed and it got coolant in the transmission fluid. And absolute worst possible scenario ensued. It's about a $5,000 repair. Uh, I will have more details on that, but suffice it to say, my truck's been down for almost three months now. And last time that happened, I was looking for a truck that I could drive around and uh, have like a second truck because it became clear that uh, I need a second truck. I, give, I do way too many projects that require a pickup truck or something equivalent, and this thing right here has been uh, my Moby Dick, and I am Ishmael. Uh, this truck has been sitting in my neighbor's yard since early 2018, and every time I look out my back window, I see that truck sitting out there. And every time I talk to him about this truck, the price went down and down and down. And what you see right here is a 2008 Ford F550 uh, four-wheel drive. It's a 17,950 gross vehicle weight. Uh, it has the Dana Super 60 front axle with manual hubs, and it has the 5R110W transmission. Uh, some of you may not know, but the Ford F550 and the Ford F450 are exactly the same truck. I'm not going to lie to you, they're exactly the same truck. They have exactly the same axles, the chassis is exactly the same, unless you buy the 19,500 GVW truck or you buy a special wrecker only chassis and those have a taller chassis but this truck right here is the same as an f450 uh, so i got this truck it originally came with a 6.4 liter what a surprise that is why it was so cheap because there is no 6.4 liter and a 6.4 liter is $5,500 for a long block. The problem is, is that this truck did not have a long block. I did not have a core. I did not have all of the stuff that goes on the long block, even if I had a long block to put in this. And I wanted a cheap truck because I looked on Craigslist again and again and again. And in my area, Southern Oregon, when you're looking for trucks, people want $1,600 for an F-150 that's 35 years old with a blown head gasket or a bad transmission. So I got this truck for $400. Uh, the chassis has 101,000 miles on it. It was originally uh, purchased and owned by Lane County Sheriff's Office. It had a, a big enclosed uh, um, carrier on the back where they uh, drove People around corrections uh, would take people out to do road work, uh, you know, road cleanup or, you know, trash picking, stuff like that. And it threw a piston through the side of the block at 101,000 miles. This is a job one truck, which means it was the first of the first. It was built in three of 07. And... That means that it had all of the problems that the 6.4 trucks had, and that's probably why it grenaded a motor at 101,000 miles. But what it does have is a set of axles, a Dana Super 60 with the 6,500-pound GVW in the front, a Dana S110 rated at 13,660 pounds, if I recall correctly, and it has the 5R110W, which was put behind the uh, 6.4 liter starting in 2008. Uh, the 5R110 uh, came out in 2003, originally was put behind the 6 liter, and it was also put behind the 6.8 liter V10. Now, that kind of brings me to my next point. I didn't just buy one truck. I bought two trucks. 
This is a 2007 Ford F450 4x2 cabin chassis. It's the same 165 inch wheelbase that the 2008 F550 is, except it has a monobeam front axle with no pumpkin, so it's two wheel drive. Other than that, this being a 16,000 GVW truck is identical to that truck, aside from maybe springs, but I'm not so sure about that. Anyway, this truck is a 6.8 liter V10, and it has 237,000 miles on it. Yeah, that's what you get when you pay $450. So I've got a running V10 F450 for 450 bucks. Now, you may be saying to yourself, there's got to be a catch. You got a $400 6.4 F550 and you got a $450 V10. What's the catch? Well, it runs. It don't run real great, but it runs. So again, you might say, what's the catch? Well, the astute observers will notice that that's a pitman arm. And that's not where a pitman arm should be. And you might say, oh, that's got a little damage right there. And yes, it has a little damage right there. Well, my friends, uh, some people don't, ca don't take care of their toys very well. The person that owned this, uh, well... They had a blowout on a right front tire at 70 miles an hour, and the 19.5 tires are steel sidewall and steel tread. So when you have a blowout with one of those, it's a pretty violent experience. He was carrying three cords of firewood on the flatbed with stake sides. Right front tire let go. It broke the steering shaft off the steering box, and he went for a ride. And when he came to a stop, his load shifted, and his headache rack well, let's put it this way. He had a headache at the end of the day. It crushed the back of the cab. So this truck right here is a parts truck. It runs. I had to put a new fuel pump in it to make it run because it sat for three years with no fuel in it. And the fuel pump, well, it was a California truck and everybody knows ethanol is corrosive. So it's got five gallons of mower fuel, which doesn't have ethanol in it right now and a brand new fuel pump. So it starts and runs. Uh, you might also be saying, hey, this is a 2007 and that's a 2008 and hey, that's a diesel truck and this is a gas truck. But how are you going to make it work? Well, the idea kind of changed initially because I had a look at that truck, the, five, the 08, and I had a look at the pictures of this truck. I had never seen one of these late model trucks in person. And my thought was, well, maybe I can make it work real simply, or worst case scenario, I'll just do a complete swap of the interior, the dash, the wiring harness, everything. Until I looked at that cab over there and realized that Ford completely changed the heater box and the firewall stamping is different. So you can't stick an 07 dash in an 08 truck and still have a functioning heater because Ford miniaturized the heater box assembly and instead of being this giant mass on the firewall on the passenger side over the wheel well, it's actually in the dash in the vehicle. Um, so then began my journey of, well, maybe I can just, you know, hack some wires and I can take the wiring harness out of this running vehicle and splice it into the, the 08. And that could happen uh, let me, you know, bring you over and I'll point some stuff out on the 08. Now let me show you around this 08. I am really, really impressed with Ford's engineers. The Super Duty is one of their better selling products and I suspect it makes a lot of their profit. So therefore it makes a lot of sense for them to put effort into reducing the cost and building it. To that end, there's an amazing amount of cost reduction in this truck and not in a bad way uh, but at the same time there's an incredible amount of modularity which is good for people like me who are thinking outside the box now this is the ecm right here 
on uh, for the 08. There's two connectors on this ECM. The connector that's not populated right here, that goes to the engine. Uh, the other connector right here is called the chassis connector. This connects to everything else in the uh, in the truck, like the instrument cluster, the throttle pedal. Um, it connects to the ABS system. And therefore, uh, a lot of important stuff goes through this connector. Now, I have a pinout of this connector. You can find this stuff online for the 08. It's a F250 6.4, you know, on a forum somewhere. There's uh, some PDFs. It's, it just captures from an online um, uh, Ford program. I actually purchased the factory Ford wiring harness uh, book, the diagram for the 07, so I know what I'm dealing with on that truck. The 08, uh, it's a little bit more expensive. I'm kind of holding off on buying that right now. But my initial idea was I've got this connector right here and this one right here. I'll just butcher it and make it work. But then I started looking into, well, maybe I am getting it over my head. Maybe I should just buy an 08 donor vehicle that's got a V10. Started looking at Copart. There was one on there. Uh, somebody bought it. They put 2,000 miles on it after fixing some collision damage, and they put it back on Copart, and it keeps going for under five grand, and they keep, you know, declining the sale. So I, I'm not going to chase that. But anyway, the point being is that uh, this modularity I was talking about, uh, it really makes a lot of sense whenever you're dealing with these uh, vehicles. So uh, on this Right here, we've got this chassis harness. This connects to the smart junction box, which is the fuse box that's in the cab on the passenger side kick panel. That's where Ford relocated the fuse box in 08. And then the, this harness right here is everything in the engine compartment. It's one sub-assembly. There's a connector on the driver's side, a connector on the passenger side, and then to the computer. And that harness includes the engine fuse box and it includes uh, you know, everything that connects to the battery, this whole kit and caboodle. Now, going back to modularity, Ford only made two harnesses. They made a gasoline harness and they made a, a diesel harness. The gasoline harness is shared between the 5.4 and the 6.8 liter trucks. The F450 and 550 were only available with two engine options, the 6.8 liter V10 or the 6.4 liter V8. So. Uh, the V10, what I did is I called up a junkyard in Spokane, Washington, and for 200 bucks, I got the entire wiring harness, not clipped, just all, you know, all the connectors disconnected the entire engine compartment wiring harness for $200 for a gas engine, because there's a whole lot of 5.4 F250s out there that are great donor vehicles. And because... Ford shared so many parts between the gasoline engines, uh, it's a ready source of components that are cheap and plentiful, relatively speaking. Um, unfortunately, a lot of junkyards out there are selling fuse boxes with pigtails, which means they're literally throwing away $200 worth of wiring because they just want to cut it all up. They're hack and slash. And unfortunately, too many junkyards do that, in my opinion. But anyway... Um, getting back to this, so I don't have it all completely worked out. I do have a lot mapped out. On the 08 diesel truck, they have a transmission control module that lives on the frame rail underneath uh, sort of where the, uh, the driver's seat is. Uh, that transmission control module runs the entire transmission because the engine computer doesn't do that. That's one of the unique things about this 6.4, you know, in my opinion, uh, and it kind of points to when they came out with the 6.4, they went with the new common rail fuel injection with Siemens injection or Siemens injectors. You take out that ECU and it says Siemens on the ECU. So it's my hypothesis that Ford actually bought the entire injection system lock, stock and barrel from Siemens, including the ECU. And that's why the ECU doesn't control the transmission, unlike the V10 and 5.4. Now, Ford's gasoline engines have three connectors on the ECU. One of them goes to the transmission to run all of that. One of them goes to the engine to run all of that. And one of them goes to the chassis, which then connects to the rest of the body. So that being said, uh, you're saying to yourself, well, A, you've got a 2007 
you know, that can't possibly work, and this is a 2008, and what about emissions and all that, and you know, this and the other? Well, to answer some of those questions, uh, you know, in your, where you live, it may not be permissible to put a gasoline engine in a diesel vehicle. However, uh, something to consider, California currently has a, uh, a policy in place where uh, all pre-2010 vehicles that are diesel with a gross vehicle weight over 14,000 pounds, which means basically every F-450 and above made by Ford with a diesel engine needs to have the engine replaced with a 2010 or newer compliant engine. Now, there's a little bit of a funny thing here because... Ford built the same engine between 2008 and 2010. So I kind of have a, a problem. You know, it's like, how could a 6.4 V8 not be compliant uh, with that rule because it was the same engine in 2010? You know, that's an aside. But uh, point being is that here in Oregon, in my county, they don't do emissions testing. And there is no protocol for doing engine swaps and and notifying DMV and, you know, officially changing the engine over. But when you look at the uh, Oregon statutes, it states that if you do an engine swap and you convert a diesel engine vehicle over to gasoline, the, the gasoline engine must comply with uh, emissions laws for the same model year or newer that they'd get the diesel engine complied with. That means that I need to make it compliant with a 2008 you know, gasoline engine vehicle. And you're saying, well, but you've got a 2007 donor vehicle. Yes, I do. And that's because between 2005 and 2019, Ford used the same V8 engine or V10 engine in all of their, you know, heavy duty or medium duty trucks. That 362 horsepower engine that they came out with in 05 never changed. And it certainly did not change between 07 and 08. Now, there are some sort of, you know, interesting production number, you know, changes uh, at Ford. Um, when you look up engine mounts for an 07, for instance, there is a date break of 12-18-06. Uh, and it seems that Ford was tooling up for job one for 07 model year trucks quite a bit late in its production history. Uh, I don't know, I, I wasn't able to find job one numbers for 08, so I don't know what that, that window of time is, but um, like these engine mounts right here are the single bolt through style, and the ones in my truck, because it was manufactured in 6 of 06, being a job 107 truck, uh, that has the old style engine mounts that would have been found on a two valve uh, V10. So there is some similarities and differences that I'll have to account for. I still haven't figured out everything about how the transmission hooks up because while I can get all of this chassis harness and make the dashboard work and I'm kind of crossing my fingers that the 07 ECU will talk to all of the stuff in here. Um, worst case scenario, I got to buy an 08 ECU off of eBay for a hundred bucks or something like that. But the, the point is, is that it's totally doable. The 07 trucks and 08 trucks have the same emissions as far as I know. Uh, it's extremely minimal on a V10, the emissions components on it. So uh, doing the engine swap, even if it's an older engine, it's still you know a junkyard replacement engine. Uh, if it's the same engine family and it has all the add-on emission stuff to make it 08 compliant, this is a total win and, uh, you know, great. Uh, like I said, going back to if you were in California and you didn't want to throw away a perfectly good truck, you could potentially do an engine swap. Uh, I'm doing this, you know, just sort of on the side as myself, uh, not in a professional capacity. I'm not a professional. I'm just a tinkerer. Um, but I thought I would share this uh, and kind of bring you along on this project because uh you know, people do engine swaps and you go on forums and there's one guy that wants to put a V10 in an F-150 here or there, but, you know, and people done V10s and Mustangs and stuff like that, but I've never heard of anybody doing a V10 swap in uh, a diesel truck. And normally, and I, I did talk to a friend, I, normally people do a Fummin swap on this, which would absolutely not be smog compliant. There is no way in, you know, heck that 
you could put a Fummins in this and actually pass any sort of emissions test. So if you are in a strictly regulated state like California, good luck with that. You could actually do this engine swap in California, and it would be perfectly legal, and you'd be able to keep your truck. Right now, uh, the there's a rolling window in, I don't know exactly what, you know, where their cutoff date is right now, but say an 04 truck can't be registered in California. Um, so the cutoff year is 2023 for a 2009, uh, uh, diesel, you know, medium duty and higher truck. So there's only a few more years that a truck like this would still be legal in California, uh, much less, you know, I guess sort of my fear is, is that Oregon may fall in line with California because of our governor and, you know, the way her politics are. She keeps pushing the cap and trade and, you know, we may end up falling into a scenario where, you know, they just basically parrot everything California does and this truck would not be legal. Although I think there's going to be some grandfathering in place because California made those rules a while ago. Um, so I'm just sort of, you know, looking at this like, Hey, I've got a truck here, 400 bucks. It's got a hundred thousand miles on the chassis and running gear. Um, the engine or the transmissions are known to be long lasting. The five R one tens are great trannies. Never heard anything bad about them. I'm like a four R 100. Um, so, uh, the bell housing bolt pattern is the same. Ford went to the modular pattern when they went to the six liter. So it's a dual pattern on the bell housing here fits a V10 or a V8. The torque converter is different, but everything else in the transmission is identical. Um, so my transmission builder I talked to, uh, they said, yeah, we only stock one transmission in the 5R110. And, uh, you know, to that end, you go in like that two wheel drive truck right there, it has a bolt on flange for the output yoke on the transmission. And it has a transfer case mount on the back of it. So as far as I can tell, Ford really did their job and they made one transmission, one. It goes behind the V10 or the V8 diesel and it's four wheel drive or two wheel drive. You just bolt a, a flange on it if it's two wheel drive and throw a seal in it. Uh, four wheel drive, you just bolt a transfer case up to it and it's got the little stub shaft instead of the long tail housing like a 4 or 100 does. So um, anyway, uh, you know, I've got a wiring harness. Uh, I've got the bracket for the computer. I've got uh, the air intake assembly because it's different on the 08. Um, I've got the radiator hoses coming because the radiator is very different on an 08. Uh, now, this, that kind of brings me to another point about modularity in terms of collision repair on an 08 truck. Uh, so on an 07, like a, a 99 to 07 truck, you've got... Uh, a body with some stamp panels here, and then you've got some sheet metal, and then you've got a big horseshoe shaped piece that goes down and bolts to the chassis, and then you've got another metal rail that bolts across the top. There's a lot of pieces to replace and repair in a collision. In an 08, this right here is part of the body. There is a cross member down here, which is a second assembly, uh, which is individually replaceable. Um, it is welded to the, you know, these crash structures right here, but there's only one part. It's just a, a plastic, you know, fiber reinforced plastic core support that bolts between here and there. And the radiator bolts to that and sets in some little rubber grommets in a saddle right here. Um, they really reduced the number of components in the front end on the 08, uh, you know, 08 to 10. And to some degree, they carried that on to the, the 11 and, and later trucks uh, with some running changes, but it, it really is, uh, you know, pretty amazing how simple or how simplified they made this. They dropped the front frame rails down. And by doing that, they eliminated that front crash crash structure, uh, that exists on the 99 to 07 trucks, which I'll show you right here at the tip of my blurry finger. You can see right there, there's sort of like a, a bar, well, there is a crash structure about 20 inches off the ground on the 99 to 07 trucks. That's really the bumper. The bumper itself is just a, a thin piece of sheet metal that doesn't really do anything. It's, it's like a 16th of an inch, maybe a slightly thicker. And, uh, that, that lower 
uh, bar that you see there is the bumper. That's what collides with other vehicles. Now on my 02 truck, it's quite more substantial than the one on this 07 truck. And when we go back to this 08 truck, the bumper is the crash structure. There is no, there is no sub assembly under here. It's just a little short plastic air dam and the bumper. And the bumper isn't any thicker than it is on a 99-07, but they eliminated all that down there because they lowered the front frame rails, which act as absorbers. For better or worse, I don't know how if I don't know if these perform better in, in collisions in terms of repairability or not, but um, actually that kind of brings me back to a, another point since we're talking about collisions and repairability, etc. You know, my truck, uh, like I said, three years ago, somebody pulled out in front of me in a PT Cruiser, and uh, I hit them. Uh, the let's see, the left tow hook right here hit their the back of their left front wheel, and the right tow hook hit the driver's side door, and the very center of their A pillar hit the very center of my bumper, and. Uh, it was quite an ordeal getting my truck repaired because insurance companies. Um, and anyway, uh, from a sort of repairability standpoint, uh, that truck, I was confident. I knew the F-350s had mild steel frames. And I'd always heard that F-450 and above, they had a you know high high strength steel frame that they couldn't be welded, this, that, and the other. Well, straight from the Ford, from the 2012 Ford chassis book that was the the late the the only one I could find it says right in the book it says the frame steel is 36,000 psi which means it's low carbon steel it's basically it's a 36 or 1018 steel which is not hardenable it can be work hardened but it can't be heat treated which means that you could weld it or you could heat it with a torch you could bend it you could straighten it uh it's mild steel. It's not high strength steel. So I was a little concerned because this truck had had the frame welded on at the very, very back of it. And then the other truck had had, you know, welded on there. And it seems pretty common for upfitters to weld on the truck frames. And it turns out it's just plain old mild steel. And it says, it, it says right in the manual, it says section modulus is 10.1 for the F450 and F550. You get the 19.5 chassis or the wrecker chassis, and the modulus is like 17.1. So the long wheelbase chassis is like 189 inches and longer get the 17.1 modulus, which the frame is like between 8 and 10 inches tall. I, I haven't stuck a tape on it, but it's pretty close to 10 inches tall. So a section modulus of 17 would mean... You know, they make that as some pretty thick steel instead of the 5 sixteenths or 8 millimeter that this is. It's going to probably be 3 eighths or, you know, and have doublers, you know, or what they call gloves on the outside of the frame or in, you know, whatnot. So anyway, uh, you know, sort of a long winded way of uh, introducing this project uh, because of, uh, you know, YouTube stuff. You know, I, I call it Moby Dick. Maybe I should call it Moby because... Uh, you know, people, you know, AI gets a little weirded out when you start saying the word, you know, after Moby. So, um, but, you know, it's this white whale that's been sitting in my neighbor's backyard for two years, and now it's mine. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, my vacation request gets approved for Christmas vacation, and I'll have two weeks off. And my goal is to complete the swap to the point where this thing will run um, over the Christmas holiday. So I will bring you guys along and kind of show you this. This isn't so much a, Hey, here's my truck. And you know, Hey, this is me doing it. This is more like, Hey, I've never seen anybody swap a V10 into a diesel truck before. And most people think that was crazy, but there's very solid economic evidence that it's worthwhile because a V10 truck can be had for cheap because nobody seems to want them. And if you can get one that's been crashed that, you know, still runs good, you know, and if you can get one of the same model year, it makes it a real piece of cake. Um, so, but I'm looking forward to having a four wheel drive, you know, F550 with a flatbed on it which that other truck came with a flatbed. So that was a bonus. I mean, 450 bucks for basically a running V10, a flatbed, and then a bunch of parts that I can then turn around and sell on eBay or whatever. 
my my end goal is that at the very least the parts that come off these trucks will pay for the trucks and uh i'll have a, a running v10 truck for uh less than a thousand dollars invested into it at this point it's looking like uh you know i might be out of pocket about 500 bucks at the end of the day so you know uh, a running four-wheel drive f550 v10 for 500 bucks i mean who would say no to that so anyway uh i'm gonna wrap this up now because it's getting too long thanks for watching catch you later